Welcome back to PSC Stack Pilot. Today we keep on talking about the new capabilities introduced by Microsoft in SharePoint Framework 1.17.1. And I want to explain you how you can create a web part top actions. First of all, a top action can be a button or a drop down that you define in the UI of your web part whenever the web part is inserted in a page in edit mode. So basically you edit the web part and rather than having to go to the property pane, you can directly interact with buttons and drop downs from the UI of the web part inside of the page. In order to do that, you need to uh, provide an array of ITOP action items to SharePoint Framework and you will also have to implement a handler which will take care of providing the actual functionality behind the scenes of your top actions. In order to test a top action, you need to run your web part in a real modern page of SharePoint Online. In fact, it doesn't work in the SharePoint Framework Workbench page. So, that said, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to create web part top actions in practice. So, first of all, let's have a look at how the web part top actions behave and render in the UI of a modern page of SharePoint Online. Here I am in a page in edit mode, and as you can see here, just beside the comments that we used to have in all of the web parts, we also have this custom button with a custom tooltip tool tip and icon, as well as a drop down with a set of values. Now, by clicking on any of these items, you can trigger a custom action, which can be a custom piece of code, which will do the uh, configuration or the provisioning of stuff for your web part. How do you implement such kind of functionality? Well, you create with SharePoint Framework 1.17.1 a web part. Then inside the web part, you define a method which is called get top actions configuration. And you will have to return either a list of top actions or undefined if you don't have any top actions in your UI. Then the resulting iTop actions object will be made of a set of top actions, where every single top action is defined at least with a target property, a type, and a title if you want. The title will become the content of the tooltip. And then you have a properties section through which you can configure all of the other settings. So for example, for a button, you can define the text of the button and eventually the icon you want to show. For a dropdown, you will configure the options as well as uh, uh, the values for those options. So you see here, for example, we have one option, which is all items with value key equal all, and another one, my items, with key me. Then, still in the definition of the ITOP actions object, you have to implement the onExecute method, which will receive the action name and eventually the value of the selected item in a dropdown. The value can be any, or in our scenario, it is a string, so I decided to specify string as the value. And then here you simply switch across all of the different action names and you do whatever you want to do in order to behave accordingly to the selection of your end user. So it is really simple and straightforward, but really, really powerful. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.